Good morning and gentlemen, we're back and I wanted to show you where I was at. Now last night after our precipitation started I went ahead and I filtered our solutions but as they said overnight there was still some chemical reactions occurring and I had some more crystals precipitate out. So I'm in the second stage of my filtering. Now let me show you the first precipitate that came from the uh, sodium formate reduction last night and let's see if I can get a good shot on it I wish y'all could see the definition and the clarity of this silver but it's almost a pure white this light doesn't do it any justice I mean it is snow white and I've boiled it in water after I removed it from the funnel and the funny thing about it is is I didn't make those little balls right there that's what happened when I boiled it in water to clean it up and I've noticed that there wasn't much copper trapped in the solution inside of the silver now I've already boiled this for about an hour last night trying to clean it up to make sure there wasn't nothing in it because we're going to be sending this off for some tests later to see what our purity of our silver is but just like with gold that's real real clean in a powdery form it will tend to clump up and form little balls and that's what happened with that so that's kind of an indication of our purity so what I've done is I wanted to get the first drop from the solution and I want to send it off for test but I also wanted to get the second drop from this solution and send it for a test also now during the cementation process where we use copper to remove silver from a silver nitrate solution the first crystals that precipitate are usually the purest from solution those that come later drag down copper oxides and copper and things from our solution that makes them trashier so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to analyze if there's a difference in the quality or the purity of the product from the last little bit to the first major drop now what I have here is some of our solution that we've already filtered and it's a nice blue color and it has no particulate left in it and I've tested it with salt water and it tests negative for silver so we have a total reduction the reduction just took longer than what I actually thought that it would and I believe that may have had something to do with me adjusting the pH with my nitric acid there a little bit or not being in the proper pH range but that's what this is this is a journey of learning after I do this step or this process several times I will learn what works and what doesn't work it's uh, the study of science and the study of science is nothing more than the study of observation observing making rational decisions and deductions with education for what you see in front of you now this is one that I've done filtered and I cleaned the beaker up a little bit so you could see what was you know what was going on in there now this one all of my beakers silvered up on me last night and these beakers were totally clean I made sure that they was copacetically clean before I precipitated it and a lot of times what you'll wind up with when you're gold refining is if you don't have a clean vessel you'll have gold precipitate on the surface of the beaker like that well I'm not sure what's going on here silver seems to have an affinity for glass don't forget that's what our mirrors used to be made out of you would take silver and apply it to the back or a sheet of glass and the reflective properties of silver made it a mirror remember silver is the most reflective uh, precious metal element so and over here I have my Buckner funnel where I've been doing some more filtering on our solutions here and if you'll notice our solution is crystal clear if you see anything it's just on the surface of that beaker right there so and let me show you something else that I noticed about this 
I want you to look when I stir it. I don't know if you could get enough definition or not. Let me see if I can zoom in here to get you a good shot. But I want you to see the actual silver crystals that are in this solution here. They're suspended in it. And I don't know if you could see the reflectance of the light or not. Let me try moving over here. But these are just beautiful crystals. And the light just plays off of them like little diamonds. The only other crystals I've seen shine like that are silver crystals in a silver cell. But all that that you see right there are just fine silvery crystals floating around in this solution. Stir it up for just a minute. We're going to run it through our Buckner funnel anyway. This is not like gold where I allow it to settle. I did allow it to settle, but you got to do most of your trapping in the Buckner funnel. And as you can see, those swirls and those clouds, those are pure silver crystals float floating and rotating around in there. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut away for a minute. And I'm going to get another beaker set up like this one over here. And I'm going to water wash the last precipitate that fell from our solution. Because I'm going to segregate that. Because I want to be able to see what the purity difference is between those two. Now theoretically there shouldn't be any purity difference. Our problem here is going to come in our washing procedure because the copper should have been locked in our solution and the copper appears to still be locked in our solution. But that's just an educated guess. Whenever we do analytical numbers, those will give us our answers and those will give us pointers as to what we need to change in our procedure to make this procedure work. So I'm going to cut away now. And I'm going to go ahead and filter this last little bit that I've got over here through my Buckner funnel. And then I'm going to put it in a separate beaker and wash it up. And then we're going to come back and dry the silver. So the next time that you see me will probably be when we have this silver in our pirate cream dish. And we're drying it out and getting it ready to send off for our lab analysis. So I will see you gentlemen in just a few minutes. All right, gentlemen, we're back, and we've each reached the end of our long journey. What I have in front of me in my pyro ceram is the silver that I've dried out. And on the left-hand side, you will see some samples that I've taken along the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these samples off for analysis and some of this was taken from each step of the procedure uh, at different points so I could get an idea of what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And over here in our powdery cream dish, we have our silver after it's finished drying. And the one thing I've noticed about this is how it likes to clump together. It ain't like cemented silver that's real fine and powdery and sticks to everything. Uh, this stuff here just falls right off of your hands. It just wants to form in the clumps and it really doesn't want to stick to your hands. Uh, this is some pretty silver here. Let me see if I can get a good zoom in. This is some pretty white silver here. And I'm very pleased with this process. If I can get it perfected. Let's see if I can zoom in. There ain't a lot you can tell about it from that point. But this is just pure white. I don't think this camera is really doing this any justice. But this is just some pure powdery fine material. Uh, after I washed it, it decided it wanted to clump up real good, which is even better. It's easy to handle. Cemented powder a lot of times is real fine and dusty, and when you go to pour it from one vessel to another, it will actually become airborne. This stuff here doesn't want to do that. It's like gold. It just wants to clump up. And as you can see, there's no powdery residue on my fingers. It doesn't like to 
powder up very much. There may be a little powder in there, but uh, that's par for the course. So, I hope you all have enjoyed my video. I hope we've all learned something here. Uh, I'm going to be doing this process a couple of more times in the future to perfect it once I get my lab results back. Uh, I'm not sure if making a video again would help any of y'all or not. Uh, this is a process of learning, trial and error, and it's according to how well that you follow directions as to what type of product that you're going to produce. But as long as you followed these directions the way I've laid them out and you've seen me stumble through them, uh, I think that you'll find out that you're happy with the end product. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be happy yet or not. That's why I've took my samples. But my samples will give me a general idea of what I'm doing and what I'm doing wrong. Uh, you cannot just refine without doing quality control. Uh, if you're just selling metals back onto the market for their content of the metal value that's fine but as a refiner I have to know that the quality of the product that I'm producing I could produce time and time again within a certain standard if I produce a batch of silver like this and send it to a client and it's not up to quality control well, that client nine times out of ten is going to send that back to me and it's going to kind of hurt your business relationship according to how strong your relationship is with your client. But some clients, it only takes getting one batch back or getting rejected and they decide to go with a different refiner. So, I hope you all have learned something here today. I believe we all have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off now until the next time that you see me behind this camera. And there's no telling what we may be refining then. I have some more ideas for some future experiments that I would like to try to film and produce and to put on YouTube here for everybody to see. So until I see you gentlemen again, have a good day.